Welcome back, Joey here, Joel Lures. Our next lure making video straight into them. Fishing's still terrible, so this is gonna be us for God knows how long, I'm enjoying it. Uh, that last video was an absolute hit. I've absolutely had a blast doing that. Just finished him off now, that'll add it up. You would've already watched that. Got me uh, swim bait culture shirt on here, and almost big swim bait on the front. I thought, what better inspiration for the next lure? Although it's not gonna be big. Decided to roll with a swim bait, I oh, know we've just done a swim bait rat, but we're gonna do another swim bait. This is gonna be more of a typical fishable one, one we can actually go out and catch a fish on. Well, we might catch a fish on that rat yet, I'm not sure. But let's make something sensible this time. Thinking of keeping it out under that 100 mil. 90, 100 mil swim bait. I wanna do a really nice, deep, chunky profile. We'll uh, probably throw an alley bib in it, give it a little bit of weight, we'll just see. Thinking a little poly tail as well, just to kind of give it that little bit extra. We might even paint it, do a fancy paint job on it. Um, Something that sits nice and low in the water, easy to move. They're probably long videos, but I hope you enjoy it. Drop a comment down below if you're enjoying this and you want to see more. Because let me tell you, I'm having a blast doing this and I really enjoy this. Probably a little bit more than fishing <laughs> videos. Fishing videos, can it's a lot of effort and time to film and try and get decent content. This, I can sit in the shed, do what I love to do, and make you some pretty cool content, I hope. So, let's roll on him. Alrighty, drew him up there. Now, uh, that Tim just pretty roughly drawn out. Now, it's quite deep. What are we, we're 50 mil deep. I wanted that nice fat, deep profile. So I can put a heap of lead in the front, so it sits something like this in the water. That's sort of the high tide mark. I want it to sit really low, so it wakes really easy. Now, as you'll notice, I've got a little tail section there. Don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the tail yet, but by having that little section there, I want it to really flop and move around. You'll notice, I don't have a treble on that back part. This is the trade-off. If I put a treble on this back part, it's going to kill the action. It's going to weigh it down. It's not going to be nice and buoyant. It's not going to just flop around and move like we want it to. The downside is I have to put the treble up here. Depending on what size I put, they could hook together. That is a downside on a small lure like this because it's for cod. I'm going to obviously want decent hooks on it. So that's just a trade-off, but I'm happy... I'm happy for those hooks to tangle because I definitely want that tail just to flop and move all over the water. It might not sit straight, it'll just go side to side, just be crazy action. So that, that's the whole idea. I've done one this shape in the past. Oh, a long time ago, where is it? I don't even think it's happening up there. I'm gonna find it for you, because this is probably a cool thing to the new guys starting the lure making. You gotta start somewhere. I'm gonna find this bait and I'm gonna show you where I started. This is this would be four or five years old, this lure, and it was one of the first lures I did like this, like this style, so let me grab it. Here he is. As I said, I've done this about four or five years ago. Um, she's pretty rough around the edges, but I was super proud of it at the time. You can see the lead's pretty rough in the bottom there. The beauty of this lure is it swims like an absolute weapon. It's a fish catching machine. This is a really cool little video because when we get the finished product, we can compare between what I did then and what we're gonna come up with now. Don't know if I'm gonna do carved uh, detail like that in the side, but uh, let's compare the two. This video has taken a turn. <laughs> so let's make, obviously I'm not gonna trace the exact same, it's gonna be different, but let's just see, let's just see in four or five years how different our finishes come up. So um, yeah, that's a cool, cool idea for a video. Alrighty, don't actually know how much of that you saw because the SD card was full. But anyway, nevertheless, here he is. Uh, the top profile is quite thin, but on the belly, I've uh, left him really fat. When we carve that, we're gonna just leave a big, big fat belly on this thing so it's, uh, it's only a small little wake bait but it's, uh, I think it's going to be a deadly little cod guy so uh, I'll carve him up there now. There he is, roughly sand it up, taking a bit of shape. See so yeah, I've just carved him up there and uh, Sand him away, a bit of 80 grit, real rough to start with. Just did a little bit of one, uh, 120 over him, but I'll give him a finer sand before we uh, seal him and that and just tidy up them few edges. But uh, you can see he's starting to take shape there. We're back. It's like two, three maybe weeks later. Have had no time to do anything on our little uh, swim bait. But anyway, we're back. It's just, it's been a crazy few weeks. Um, 
lures have been out of control. We've been away filming some content back for YouTube. We've had a few things, a few trips planned which we've been doing, which is fantastic. Getting ready to go away again for this weekend. And as you can hear, three weeks on, it's still bloody raining. It's just, so as I said on earlier in this video, there's no bass season, hence why we're doing all these cool little videos for you guys, just to fill in the weeks where we don't have any content. So, uh, so let's get into this guy. Alrighty, we've just jointed him up there. Now, as you'll see, it's a straight joint. We haven't uh, gone the V joint like we did the wrap. We've just gone straight across. Now, main reason being, there's not a lot of meat back there. It's quite small, that end piece. Um, and I really want it to knock really side to side. As I said earlier, I just want that side piece, not really to sit straight. As you move it, I just want it to go side to side. So. If I V that, it's going to be restricted to its movement. The best movement out of any joint is just a straight one like that because it's just so much freer. The water can grab it and throw it side to side. So I've just gone that. It doesn't look as pretty when you joint it in there um, and you never get it as close because when you V it, you can rebait them back in there and it does look heaps neater. But I want this to be a practical lure. I want this to be a fishing machine and catch fish. So I'm making this to be as practical as possible and I really want that action to be super wild. So, and that tail, I really want to sit up nice and high. So, that's why we've gone to that. Uh, go ahead there now and put some lead in. So, as I've said, we're going to put the lead um, in the front end. We're going to keep a lot of that lead in the front. Probably just going to put one big lead hole in there. Um, I can go quite deep on this hole because it is a deep bait. So even if I go up, like I've mentioned before, if I come up halfway, I'm still, that's still a lot of lead I can put in there. So drill those holes, put that lead in there. All right, as you would see here, um, had a slight change of plans with our hook placement. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said that I was gonna have both the hooks in that first segment. Been doing a little bit of thinking about this while well, I haven't been doing anything on this lure for the last few weeks. And like I've just mentioned before, I want this to be a really practical fish catching lure. So to be a practical cod lure, we need to put some bigger hooks on there. The hooks that we're gonna swing off this thing weren't really gonna be doing the job. I'm confident that with the amount of lead I'm gonna put in this, it's still gonna sit nice nose down and that tail is still gonna swing even with the weight of that treble. I don't wanna sacrifice putting lighter gauge hooks on there and then hooking that cracking big fish and then regretting it because I lose it and it mangles the hook. So we're gonna roll with some heavier hooks some bigger size, two, or no, they're size ones. Um, what I put on my barrel lure. Gonna roll with that. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. I know we've changed things, but you've just gotta roll for punches, and this is how you design lures. This is this is why you make 10 of something to start with to see if it's gonna work. So, that's what we're gonna go with. Alright, as you can see, I've just, um, I'm, <laughs> I really can't be bothered to put the lead pot on tonight, just to do one hole. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you can, that's just a sinker, I'm just going to glue that sinker in there, do me a little baking soda trick over the top, and it's done. We'll give him a little uh, sit in some water and we'll just test how he sits. There he is. Really took some shape there now. So I cut a little tail in there off camera because I didn't actually bandsaw it, I actually used a handsaw. It was a little bit unconventional and I kind of actually forgot to film it. 
But check that out. That looks damn cool. Now, I'll give you an idea of the profile. Now, remember we've said we wanted that fat belly from the beginning and he's still there. The hook's tangled now. That I, I really can't avoid that on this lure. The only way to avoid that is to put tiny hooks on there. So, I'm going to give you the example. So, to avoid that from tangling, you could put something like that on there. But as you could see, that just does look silly. Super unconventional. It's just not the right hook now. Unfortunately, in a small little lure like this, um, I can't do anything about it. We're just going to have that. But, hey, it's a slow-moving lure. It's not, it shouldn't be a problem. This lure is ready to seal up. Um, little sand up of the belly there. I've actually, as you'll notice, I've actually put the um, eyelet, the hook hanger there. I've actually put him through the corner of me, uh, me super glue and baking soda there and put it into the timber on a bit of an angle. Now the reason being is I've just wanted to bring that hook uh, forward a little there from the uh, previous hole you'll see there. So, uh, and also that's going to help bind all that lead in a bit more once I glue that through there. So. Gonna grab a container of water, just gonna drop this guy in. Um, as I said, like I haven't tried this in it yet. I know it's gonna swim, I'm not worried about that. I just wanna make sure it's sitting in the water to where I want it. Oh yeah, look at that, absolutely perfect. That's only just out of the water. That is literally what we wanted, that that looks awesome. Um, really low in the water, That that's yeah, that's what I had in mind, that tail's nice and high. So that way he's sitting a little bit, sits a little bit, I don't know, that's, that's pretty straight. The tail's just making him go side to side. So um, we'll add a little bit more weight when it's cleared and painted, etc. A tiny little bit of weight and all that. Now, out of curiosity, uh, let's just test the original one that uh, we did all them years ago. Let's just test him in the water. <laughs> you know why? As far as that sits in the water, we would literally not get that any closer than that other one. I reckon... If I measure that, I literally think it sits in exactly the same amount as the other one. I'm absolutely stoked with that because that's the whole thing. We, we want to compare these two. So I know that this swims good, but I know that that new one's going to swim better. So I can't wait to show you guys. Time to paint our little swim bait. Now, we are going to paint this in a uh, like that large mouth bass sort of pattern, that bass pattern. So... Um, Something similar, we might put a bit of a twist on it, but that sort of style, just so the main reason, so we can compare it to that original one, but I already have in mind, I'm going to do a bit of a twist on it, slightly different coloured green, but in essence it's going to be like that bass pattern, so uh, let's get straight in and paint him. Alrighty, he has been primed and sealed, and I've just painted him pearl white, uh, all ready to go, it's a bit hard to pick up in that light, but there he is, so uh, I'm going to start laying some base colours down on it now. All right, that's the uh, the base down there on the top. That's just uh, a bit of raw umber. So uh, that's just what we're going to work with. And we'll do the tail section there now. Let's put a little bit of focus. A bit of lime pearl green over the back of him there and just blend it in. You can see that looks pretty cool. But now all I'm going to do is just make it like a little bit of a lateral line um, in this bright yellow. I'm just going to do that little bit of a lateral line because that's actually where my black pattern's going to go over, so it's going to hide a little bit. But I just want to different. I just want to differentiate. Differentiate. Yeah. I just want to different. I just want to separate. We'll go with that. I just want to separate uh, the top from the bottom and just have a little bit of a line there. So we're just going to put a little bit of a uh, a yellow lateral line in, really quite faint. Yep, just like that. See, now it's just sort of a bit more separate. Just blends it a little bit nicer. Yep, exactly what we want. Just like that. There's our, uh, there's our pattern. The pattern's probably a little bit larger than what I wanted, but we're going to put some scale pattern over it now, and that'll kill out the black a little bit. So, uh, 
So I just cleaned out the eye sockets there. So I'm just going to make those eye sockets black just to tidy them up. And it just gives the eye a little bit of contrast too. Something just makes it look angry, the eye. I don't know. I just like putting black around the eye socket. Now, it does look pretty cool. It hasn't turned out exactly like I envisioned, but it still looks terribly cool. Although, I think it's just missing a little something. Like, it's definitely not that typical largemouth bass pattern. Um, the pattern on there is probably a little large, so I would have wanted to have said that, but um, hey, it's still going to be cool. We can compare it between the old and the new. But what I think this is, needs is I'm just going to throw a little bit of pearl white over the back and I'm just going to mist on a little bit of pearl purple just to get a little bit of pearl lessons over the back so give it a go, I reckon it'll look alright That's uh, that's him. It's pretty hard to tell here in this light. I need to do something better about this light so you guys can see it better. But um, looks pretty cool. It's a little bit different to what we uh, were sort of aiming for. It's really natural, sort of them motley, sort of natural coddy patterns. So pretty happy with that it came up. Um, it's not fantastic, but it's going to catch a fish, and that's the whole point of this is to be practical and catch a fish. Now. You would notice that little uh, fluoro dot up in his nose. No, it's not just to look pretty, it actually has a purpose. Now the purpose of that is, when you're cranking that through the water, if the water's a little bit coloured, I can see where that lure is all the time. I can see that fluoro dot, and if a fish hits it, and I'm not sure if the lure's disappeared, I can see if that fluoro dot's missing or not. So there is actually a method behind that fluoro dot on a lot of uh, swim baits and glide baits noses, and that's exactly the reason. So we're gonna clear this fella up and get him finished. Now we forgot the eyes. Uh, I've got to work out what eyes to put on him. I reckon that gold might look cool. Mm. Yep, that's the one, but they're too small. Get some bigger ones. Right, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, that's the eye. Beautiful. Clear time. Time to glue this bad boy up. He's out of the clear. Looks pretty damn cool. Actually come up a bit better than I first thought. Wasn't totally convinced when I was painting it, but now I'm looking at it going, this is a super, super nice cod colour, real natural. It, it is a cool, it's going to be a cool river cod colour, so pretty happy with it. Almost got that Hina Murray cod pattern to it, so pretty happy. Glue this thing up. Hopefully we can go catch a fish on him. Done him, he's all done. All glued him up there, as you would see. Um, we've uh, rolled the tail in it, glued him up, hooks on, bibs in. Looks uh, looks really cool. Now this one hasn't got the uh, the YT in the bib. I uh, was a little bit small right on there, so I've just signed him. Um, my signature, the date, and YT two. So YouTube, lure number two. Although, this one's probably not gonna be up for sale either. Um, I've got a little trip coming up that I plan on fishing this. 
But uh, that's not going to be in this video. This is just a little making one. This one, just to check out how we've made this guy. Now the next part of the video is we are going to swim this lure. We're going to swim it up against the original and the new one as you can see there. Uh, as far as the finish goes, the new one is leaps and bounds ahead. But uh, we're going to touch on that once we're swimming. We'll do a uh, review on both of them once we've swum the new one. And we'll swim the old one side by side and uh, give you guys a really good look. So as far as the lure making side of it, that bit's done. Let's get into swimming it. The most enjoyable part. Let's do it. Here we are finally. It's uh, it's D-Day for the swim test between the old and the new. Look at that thing. It looks sensational. All right, I'm gonna give these things a swim side by side. Let's see. Uh, let's see how they match up. Let's see what you think. Well, there you have it. You've just checked out a few different angles there. Um, as far as visually in the water, you wouldn't really know the difference between them. This one's slightly wider. Um, the new one has a far better knock. It's so much louder, but visually in the water, you throw them out, you wouldn't really know the difference. Now, you'll see here there's a different angle with the new one. Now, um, I twitched it on the spot, and with that tail, it really sticks the tail up and just wobbles like a fish sort of feeding or injured. So. That has a really cool action, um, where you can't get that out of this one. Tail isn't there to kill it. So um, obviously, four or five years on, the new one wins in my vote. Um, I'm sure that it probably will in your book too. It looks better, definitely swims better. So um, that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm already filming the next one, and it is going to be a build to catch. So the catching of the fish is going to be in that one. Pretty confident we're going to catch on it though. It is a cracking bait. You are not going to want to miss that one. If you like more of these videos, guys, whack that subscribe button. Catch on the next one.